Welcome back. Here is part two of Angular JS and SharePoint. In this section, we are going to talk about what is Angular JS, describe what a single page application is, and explain REST and JSON. So, what is Angular JS? Most of you should be familiar with uh, JavaScript. You've worked with it some and you should know what a JavaScript library is. One of the most popular JavaScript libraries out there is jQuery. jQuery is a library of functions you can add to your JavaScript page. All you have to do is link to the JavaScript library for jQuery and you can reference in one line the equivalent of 10 or 20 lines of JavaScript code. jQuery is very handy. However, each use of it is completely independent of every other use within your application. You can have 10 different jQuery references in your code, and while they are great time savers, none of them are connected to each other in any way. AngularJS is also a JavaScript library. You attach it to your application by referencing it. Um, the way that I have it structured that you're going to be able to get a copy of, I have downloaded the JavaScript library for AngularJS and some of the other AngularJS libraries and put them in the same folder. But you can certainly put them in a scripts folder for other apps to use. You can put it in the Hive um, if you're running online, you can point to someone else's um, store of AngularJS, but I recommend getting a copy and putting it somewhere within your SharePoint farm where other applications can use it, and that way you ensure that all of your developers are using the same version of both jQuery and Angular. So what makes AngularJS different is it is a complete system that allows multiple components to see each other and share information. AngularJS is a framework that lets you build a full-fledged application. Thus, it is much more valuable than jQuery. But you will see that I still use jQuery at times within my application. Now, those of you who may be familiar with Angular know that there is version 1, AngularJS as it's called, or Angular JavaScript, and there's Angular version 2, 3, 4, and I'm sure there are newer versions by now. Why am I not using the latest version? Well, my target audience for this presentation today is people who have limited access to SharePoint. They may be a site collection administrator. They may have their own workstation and be able to build whatever they like for SharePoint, but they may be restricted. You may not be able to deploy WSPs to your backend server. You may not be able to install other tools to do your work. Well, AngularJS works. You could use Notepad as your text editor. In all my examples, I'm using SharePoint Designer because I think almost anyone who's working in SharePoint can justify getting a copy of SharePoint Designer. And we're using that as a text editor and as a file manager to check files in and out of our site assets library, which is where this app is stored. It's in a folder in our site assets library in one of our sites. It can be the top level site, it can be a subsite, it really doesn't matter. But in order to use it, all you need is the JavaScript libraries and SharePoint Designer or some other text editor maybe that suits your needs better. If you want to use Angular 2 or later of other versions of Angular, you need to install Node.js and you need to install TypeScript. Now, that may not be a great hurdle for you, but my goal was to present this in a format that's useful to anybody who may be limited in resources, limited in what they're allowed to put on their workstation. All the work I currently do, I only use SharePoint Designer. This course that I'm teaching today is going to show you how to do everything you need just using SharePoint Designer and your browser. That's why we're using AngularJS. Now, AngularJS follows the model view controller concept. 
I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Suffice it to say, the model is your data. In our case, one or more SharePoint lists we're pulling the information from. The view are the HTML files that display the controls that make your form look like a form. And the controller is the JavaScript files, the code that provides all the programming language and makes it possible for the view to show the model. And that's enough about MVC. Next, we'll talk about our single page application. First, what will our app do? Our application is going to read a SharePoint list, the IT request list I showed you earlier. It's going to show different views from the list. It's going to allow the user to search and filter the results. It's going to allow you to read a SharePoint item, and it's going to allow you to add, to edit, and to delete SharePoint items. So what do we need to do in order for our single page application to work? We need to download the JavaScript libraries, as I already mentioned, and they're going to go in the site assets library. We need to create our SharePoint list, which we've already done. We need to create a site page that is going to host our application. And we need to create HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files, which will actually compose our application. And all of these components are going to be in the site assets library in the folder we're going to show you. And it's going to be hosted within the site page we create. Now I will explain the SharePoint REST API. REST is representational state transfer. It is a means by which you can query a data source on the internet or on your own internal network simply by using a URL. You create a URL that queries the rest and it will return the results of your query. It will return it in the format of XML or JSON. There are many online sources that make REST API points available to users, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and of course, SharePoint. But the really interesting thing about the way that a REST API works is you can display it in a browser. You can type out your URL that you're going to embed in your code, and you can simply paste it into your browser, and it will return the XML from the data source. It's a very convenient way when you're debugging, when you're trying to figure out how you want to get certain information from a site to be able to just drop that URL in a browser and have it return exactly what you're looking for. It's very, very convenient. Next, we're going to talk about JSON. What is JSON? Well, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It is XML based. I like to think of JSON as XML on steroids. It is very user friendly. A lot of XML is very hard to read. And once you get it in your code, it's very hard to tease out the individual parts you want without jumping through a lot of hoops. It makes me question why XML was accepted in the first place as a standard because it really doesn't make it easy to play with. And it seems like there's so many layers of complexity on it that you're digging down five layers to get to the actual data. Um, JSON, when you see it in the code, the way it's rendered, you'll agree it's as simple as it possibly could be pulling from one medium into another. It is also strongly typed. This is, I find, is the most exciting about using JSON. You can query a your input that you're getting from REST, and you can say, okay, for this result, and you can use square brackets and double quotes, and you can reference the field name, and you can use, you know, field zero, field one, and so on. But if you know that the name of the, the field title, for example, exists in the data you're pulling, you can simply refer to request.title, and it'll give you the title as a string. I mean, it's so pretty to see in the code that you're amazed that JSON works so well and it's so easy to work with and see when you're reading the code to try and interpret what it's doing. It's about as straightforward as you can get. Request.title. Well, that's the title field. So very 
very, very useful. Both REST and JSON are critical to our application. So I want to at least explain the terms. I definitely recommend you spend some time reading up on how to use REST and a little bit of time on JSON understanding um, the complexity of it. The examples I'm giving in my app, of course, they work. Uh, you may want to do some more digging into why they work and what other things you can pull out of it. And I recommend you do that um, on your own. So here we're going to show an example of how the REST API works. I'm going to pull in a URL that I have. Now notice it's douglasweb.com, which is my website. API web is how we talk to REST. And then lists is the collection of lists within this website. If we were drilling down into a subsite, it would be the full URL with the subsite and then API web. And then we have the lists and then we have get by title is a command we send to lists. We simply type in the display name requests for our list and then items. And this returns, as you can see, all of the items for our um, list. These are all of the fields that are returned from our REST call. Now notice that department and category, they're lookup fields, and it's returning, instead of department, it's returning department ID because it's a number. If you wanted to put an expand command into your REST call, then it would make the department title available as well. But in this case, we're only returning just the ID. So as you can see, we've got the XML for every item in our list just from this simple call. And it's very easy to come in here and test by creating a URL and pasting it into Internet Explorer. You can see the results in XML, and it tells you what data is available, what the field names are, and so forth, and how they're found, the structure of where you find them within the data that's returned. This is the end of part two of our video series. In our next section, we are going to show the website and the overall layout of our application and explain briefly the components that make up the application. And that should finish out hour one of our SharePoint Saturday presentation.